It's Menopause Barbie joining you again for a continuation on our discussion of the differences between strong estrogen and weak estrogen. This is tutorial number 27 and the name of this is Which Estrogen Steals the Show? And you might notice that we're in my boudoir and I thought it'd be fun to film in here because it's sort of like, well, which outfit steals the show? Or which pair of shoes steal the show? For me, it's this pair for sure. I love them. So, if you're following along in the book, today it's pages 110 to 115, same pages as last time. And if you're following along with the outline notes, we're still on page 26. <laughs> so, this is one of those tutorials that's critically dependent on the previous two tutorials. So, watch those before you watch this one. And you know, you know how your mother used to tell you things that you ignored and later on you realize that she was right and you should have listened to her? Well, my advice is like that. And I know I'm always telling you that you know yourself better than anyone else does, but when it comes to the order of these tutorials, I know better than you about that. So, watch them in order. In the last two tutorials, I taught you that when there's an empty estrogen receptor sitting around waiting for an estrogen molecule to fill it, either a strong human or pharmaceutical estrogen or a weak phytoestrogen can fill it. And then I taught you that there's a huge difference in the scenario between human estrogen or pharmaceutical estrogen versus phytoestrogens. And that's because, as you can see here, the human or pharmaceutical estrogen is 1,500 to 11,000 times more attracted to the receptor site than the phytoestrogen. And the human pharmaceutical estrogens are 100 to 1,000 times as strong as phyto estrogens. So it's kind of like there are a limited number of binding sites and these two different strengths of estrogen are fighting for the available spots. It's just like two men fighting over a woman. Do you remember these guys? I showed them to you once. Here we have Ken and here we have Mr. Wonderful and these two guys are fighting over Barbie. Now, at first blush, you probably think that Ken has the advantage. I mean, face it, he's stronger. Look at those muscles. He's better looking. And he's practically naked. <laughs> we like that. <laughs> but Mr. Wonderful here has some features that Ken doesn't have. He's got a much better smile. He's got great big hands and feet. I've been thinking about you all day long. Oh. Schnickles, I've left you with some extra <laughs> cash to go shopping with the girls today. He says all the things that Barbie loves to hear. <laughs> so, <laughs> this battle between the men for Barbie may not turn out the way you predict. And so this is how it is with estrogens of different strengths. So if you take our estrogens, the big question that we were embarking on in the last tutorial was what determines which of those two kinds of estrogen gets to bind with the receptor site? And you learn that it all depends on how much estrogen there is already circulating in your body. So, it's time now for some more examples with our puzzle pieces. So, I'm gonna get rid of these and give you some new ones to look at and we'll take this one step further. Okay. It's like changing props, you know? Okay, for scenario one, let's say this is your estrogen receptor 
the molecule in your body that has estrogen receptor sites on it that is sitting there waiting for an estrogen molecule to bind. And let's say that with scenario one, there's plenty of estrogen in your body. I mean, look at all this estrogen, maybe too much estrogen. So you have this receptor here. If all of these three spots that I'm going to fill here, now the fourth one could fill two, but we're going to use three. If all three of these attached to an estrogen molecule with a strength of 100, which is the strength we are using for your own human estrogen. So your estrogen levels are high. Each estrogen hormone molecule is a value of 100. And let's say three of these bind. Well, if that happens, then your overall strength of estrogen is 300 because these don't count. They're not bound. They have to bind before they count. So the three that count are those three. Now, there's an alternative, and this is the big catch to the lesson today. What if instead of all three of these binding to an estrogen, human estrogen molecule of strength 100, what if one of these binds instead with a phytoestrogen. Well, what happens? Well, now, instead of having what was 300, what could have been 300, the total strength of estrogen is 100, 200, and 1. So instead of having 300 estrogen, you have 201. So that's a difference. So what if Instead of two of these binding with the estrogen from your body, let's say that two of them are occupied by a phytoestrogen molecule. Again, what, look what happens. Now you have estrogen strength 1, 101, 102. So instead of what could have been, which would, could have been 300 if all of these sites had bound with a human estrogen, you now only have 101. And what if, despite all this estrogen that's floating around, your receptor sites bind with even another phytoestrogen molecule? So what do you have now? You have what could have been 300, and now instead it's only three. One, two, three. So when a phytoestrogen steals, literally steals a spot from a receptor site that could have been occupied by human estrogen, your estrogen levels aren't as high as they would have been with the, est with the human estrogen. So these are examples of what we call the negative or diminishing or anti-estrogenic effect of phytoestrogen. It's like the phytoestrogen is preventing the stronger estrogen from taking the spot. And so it's like the phytoestrogen steals the spot, steals the receptor site from the stronger estrogen. And so the overall effect is a lower estrogen level than you would have had otherwise. Why? Well, because binding of a weak phytoestrogen molecule inhibits the binding of the stronger human estrogen. It's that simple, okay? Now, in reality, the likelihood of one of these weak phytoestrogens stealing a spot from a strong human estrogen, it's pretty low. And that's because you learned that the attraction for phytoestrogen is so much lower than that of the human estrogen. But let's say you're suffering from symptoms of estrogen excess, too much estrogen. If you have too much estrogen, it's possible that eating phytoestrogen can lower your estrogen levels. It's pretty cool, huh? It's just possible that you can lower it that way. Now, if you play out the very same scenario with low levels of circulating estrogen, let's see how that works. So let's say you don't have all this estrogen floating around. Let's say you don't have any estrogen. Let's say that you're really, really, really low on estrogen. 
you're in the throes of postmenopause. You have no estrogen. You're, you're feeling like you really, really need some estrogen. And you've got your estrogen receptor. Okay? So let's say all of these strong ones are gone. They have left the scene. And let's say that you use phytoestrogen. So here you again have the opportunity for a phytoestrogen to attach. Okay? If, they rem if these receptor sites may remain empty, you have zero estrogen. If there's nothing that attaches, it's zero, right? Now, what if one binds? If one of these binds, instead of zero, you have one. The other two are still empty, but you have one. One is more than zero. What if two of these estrogens, phytoestrogens bind? Then you have an estrogen strength of two. This one's still empty because you have so little estrogen, but here you have two. Two is more than zero. Let's say all three of these phytoestrogen molecules bind. Now you have an estrogen strength of three. Okay, so in, you went from zero estrogen to three. These are examples of a positive or enhancing or an estrogenic effect that I described before. So the weak phytoestrogen occupies a spot that would otherwise be empty. And what that does is it raises your estrogen level, but only slightly, very slightly. So now if you're suffering from symptoms of estrogen deficiency, eating some phytoestrogens can help raise your estrogen levels. And if you only want tiny, tiny, tiny doses of estrogen, phytoestrogens might be the way to go for you that way. So some estrogen, even weak estrogen, is more than no estrogen. So to summarize what I've been telling you is some version of this. Very simple. Phytoestrogens can have one of two effects on your estrogen level. They can increase your total body estrogen if your overall circulating estrogen is low, or they can decrease your total estrogen if your overall circulating estrogen is high. Phew! It's like a little biochemistry there, huh? You were, no, didn't know you were going to get biochemistry with your menopause, but it's important for you to be able to use the information to use it, to, to, to manage your menopause your way. I think you did very well. And now you're ready to use these facts as you make choices for your own menopause. And, you know, I think you deserve a break. So we're going to stop. And the next tutorial will be a lot, lot, lot lighter. In fact, in the next tutorial, we're going to discuss some benefits of phytoestrogens and show you foods that contain phytoestrogens. So it's going to be all about food, a lot more fun and easy for you to understand. And think about this for a while because I promise it'll come in handy. So until our next tutorial where we get to see food, I bid you farewell. Bye! Thank you.